So I'm a strong believer of the mindset and the phrase works man not hard and I have to learn that the hard way. I am for making a game in 8 months or so while earning zero amount of dollars to now making a game in less than 12 or 48 hours and earning a much more decent amount of money. Loki, the intro I don't give right now might sound like a grammy scheme for that no it. I know it now befitting of me to now give you guys a proper roadmap to game dev in 2025. Let's get into it. Game engine and programming language selection. This is the first stage for any newbie trying to get into game development. So we have a very, very wide variety of game engines and then programming languages that support this game engine, which is mostly based on the use case in which you want to use them for. Now let's say for somebody you want to start making games and then you prefer making 2D kind of games, to say Godot for instance, we say more 2D and 3D type, more of a normal kind of game in which you want to make, you can say okay, go with Unity. Then let's say you want to make like triple A kind of game, we say Unreal Engine. But now for my own preference now and what I actually went with, I started with Godot. And now Godot uses GDScript as its programming language. It's an embedded programming language that was made by Godot themselves. So now GDScript, why I went to GDScript was it was on the much more easier side for me. We had I started learning Python. Now GDScript is like an extension of Python in gaming. So it was much more easier for me to jam out into. We have gaming like Godot, Unreal, Cry Engine, G Develop. Game maker and so on and so forth. So, if you can just weigh out your options for the game engines and the programming language, then you can choose which one best fits for what you want. Maybe you can also do those pros and cons kind of thing. You know, the kind of table with pros, cons, then you list out the pros, list out the cons of each game engine and programming language. You can choose from what you want. Maybe like pros now for me now, you can say good looking or something. Good looking or something. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then for cons now we can say, okay, I support Manchester United. I can say a con now. Manchester United. <laughs> but that was basically how you can decide better for what fits for you and get going on that aspect. Tutorials and online courses. So there's a bad narrative about using online courses and tutorials from like youtube to learn anything programming related technically because people think you won't learn while following tutorials or something like that i really don't know. but for me it worked for me and you just have to find the right course to learn with and you are good to go platforms like udemy coursera edx have very very good courses for programming language and gaming in which, in which you want to learn and we also have youtube but now the problem with youtube now is you have to find very credible sources for what you want to learn but if you can get a very credible source for the let's say the program language for the game you want to learn it will be very very smooth right for you so down in the comment section you guys can give me a list of the programming language for the game engine in which you've chosen to learn and I will give you a very very good tutorial or a course personally in which you can follow I will take you from 0 to 100 on game development. Coding with consistency. Honestly, if you can code every day, 24 hours a day, do it, but you can't. Not in a bad way, but you can't. You have, to, you have other things to do like breathing, to do like breathing and all of that. But the advice here is Try as much as possible to code every day, at least 30 minutes a day, just get your hands doing something. And if you can't do it every day of the week, at least give yourself four to five days in a week. So this stage is important for habits building, muscle memory, and just leveling you up as a game developer. You can't be motivated every day, but you can be safe. Community engagement. So once you are confident with building games and completing projects, it is also very very much important for you to start engaging yourself with the community you can do this by joining whatsapp community facebook groups discord servers reddit and so on and so forth and also collaborating with people on making games without so trying yourself out on new kind of games and stuff okay, we also have game jams um i'll notice i'll also be hosting a game jam very very soon and there will be like a small price to show the love and support that have shown me. This is also a better way for you to even collaborate with 
all our programmers to make the game. As I said, as I mentioned in the game, that but then those are all the kind of things you need to do to engage yourself and you have to touch more with the community. Portfolio building and job content. So if you've successfully passed through every stage in which we discussed previously, this stage shouldn't be a problem at all. So you can apply for a job without proof that you can actually get the job done and then that's where the portfolio comes in. Now for those who don't know what a portfolio is, a portfolio is just a collection of your best work in which you can put forward to a client, to a potential client when you are trying to get yourself hired for a job. So the final stage now is just keep learning. Go over the process over and over again with multiple game engines. It's just a free blueprint and a layout for you that you can use to learn game dev in 25. And also, before I end this video, I would like to make an apology for not posting consistently after my last video. Many reasons, but the main one I just cool and I'm not going to bring that down. So I was more consistent. The videos will now be made back to back and based on what you guys need on the channel. Thank you all for the support and I really appreciate it. That's a wrap.